Hello, Carol families. Steve Wilkins here, giving you an update as we complete October and head into November. I want to do the message in three short videos. The first being what's going well at Carol right now. The second is a little bit of a math equation about why we think our current model is the best model. And three, where are we going from here? So to jump right into the first video, I want to give you an update on how the Carroll community is doing. In lots of ways, the broad, generalized sense that parents were um, in very different camps, that our educators were in very different camps, that there were people um, across a wide range of opinion and perspectives um, in what we might call a very flat bell-shaped curve where we got to the 50th percentile and it, there weren't that many more people in the middle than there were out at the, the edges. We feel pretty confident that that bell-shaped curve is now much narrower and taller. In other words, there are more people in harmony, um, more people accepting the reality of this fall as we've gotten into it than there were um, a couple months ago. I think the primary reason for this is that all Carroll students are receiving direct personalized education every day. The vast majority of students, that is to say not all, but the vast majority of students are gaining in their academic skills, developing their emotional resilience, finding happiness, and staying healthy. We realize that everything is just plain more complicated in the COVID environment than ever before. Things that, that used to be easy have become complicated. For example, Carroll School, prior to the pandemic, would say, we have one goal and we have one goal only, and it is to GEC, give each child what that child most needs. In our current environment, we realize that that statement is a little too amorphous, that actually one goal has now turned into three significant major goals with equal importance as Carroll School operates this fall. GEC has become give each child what they most need academically uh, with, with their language-based learning difficulties, but GEC has also become a second goal, which is to make sure more than ever that their social emotional well-being, the happiness and joy factor in students' lives is paramount in everything that we do. And the third goal is, of course, one that we always attended to, but never like this before, uh, health and safety has to be right up there at the top. So everything's just more complicated. One goal has become three. What's Carol doing really well right now? What are our kids doing well? What's our faculty doing well? What are our families doing well? Um, I've been out talking to um, our academic leadership group, I've been talking to some of the teaching teams, although I've not completed that project yet. And we are gelling our thoughts uh, around a number of topics that we think are going really quite well, given all the challenges. The first is working in these small advisor groups. I was just talking to a middle school teacher who said, I know my advisees in October better than I knew my advisees um, by the end of a typical school year. These advisor groups, four to one ratio, meet three times a day or more. And another teacher commented, it's really hard to imagine that a child could be falling through the cracks at Carroll School right now. It might be that uh, we are noticing how much they're struggling. Falling through the cracks doesn't mean that everybody's thriving, um, but I think we are noticing things uh, immediately. The second is, as I said in the introduction, direct instruction to every student every day. Uh, tutorial and focus areas in one-to-one, two-to-one, and three-to-one groups, the best Carroll School's ever done in providing that remedial focused work. Third, the on-campus days have been huge in terms of social, emotional well-being, happy, healthy kids, um, vibrant environment. A group of sixth graders were outside of my office um, late last week, just being wonderful 12 year olds, laughing and goofy and doing their TikToks, no, no technology involved, but sort of practicing their TikTok dances. And their teacher was right there laughing with them. That The on-campus benefit 
of uh, being in person with other human beings is undeniable. But the fourth component, which is a little bit um, something we would not have imagined, is faculty also saying that remote days in some ways are, are superior in terms of building skills and academic um, strategies in kids. And so to some extent, the combination of on campus and remote is giving us the social emotional as well as the skill building that we all need. Students are learning and making progress. Assessment of student progress, this data informed school is happening. Love the comment from one of our teachers that calm regulated adults create calm, regulated children. And I think that Carroll School has done a really good job, and I think our parents have done a superior job in creating an environment which our kids are, for the most part, pretty darn healthy this fall. Students are also learning some skills that, in a typical environment, uh, wouldn't be so pressing. You know, the, the silver lining of, of what we're doing right now. Kids are learning some essential, what we might call 21st century skills, really fast. Um, the emphasis on executive functioning for kids to be able to own their own learning, uh, to understand what's expected of them, to be organized, to plan ahead, to know how to access their materials, to ask questions, uh, is really amplified in the, this pandemic environment. We're seeing lots of children develop independence because they have to, self-reliance to a greater extent than would happen if we were um, prior to the pandemic. We're uh, obviously seeing the growth radically in, in children and adult use of technology and finding that advocacy skills, children being able to ask for help, ask questions, raise their hands either literally or virtually um, is really uh, quite an unexpected benefit of the conditions we're in right now. We are So uh, just close out this video with, uh, we understand that not every child is thriving in this environment. Um, we also understand that the vast majority of Carroll students are doing pretty darn well, given the obstacles. Um, when children are not thriving, we want to talk with you. Uh, we will initiate that often. You should feel comfortable initiating that. Uh, we intend to uh, do what Carroll always does, bend and build our program to meet the needs of your child. So um, some people have thought, you know, fighting City Hall and saying that, uh, that our current model is not working for their child. Please change your model. Um, rather, I think where we've gotten towards the end of October is we're pretty settled on this model for the time being, meeting all three major goals. But if it's not working for your child, we will bend, we will flex, and we've done it many times and expect to continue to do that. That's always what Carol does. So um, if you don't really agree with what I've just said in this video, um, we want to talk with you. We want to make sure that your child is benefiting from from their Carroll education. So through advisors, through division heads, through me, um, speak up if, if you feel that where Carroll School is currently is, is not meeting your child. There are about 10,000 things that you know Carroll cannot change about current conditions. Um, but in general, we've had a pretty darn good September and October. Thank you.